hope you're doing great. At today's question is maximal square. Given a 2D binary matrix filled with zeros and ones, find the largest square containing only ones and return its area. So for example, if this is the given matrix, you can see that the maximal square that's being formed by ones is the one that's highlighted in red, right? Because this would be a rectangle. Here, there's a zero, so this, and there are more zeros here, so it does not form like a three by three square of ones. Mm, so yeah, this is the answer, right? So that's all of the question. So this is an unsorted two-dimensional array. And let's have a look at the approaches we can use to solve this. So please uh, pause the video, think about these for a moment and come back. All right, so I think um, this, this is a different kind of a question and doesn't really fit into these uh, approaches. So we can, we can use dynamic programming to solve this. Uh, and the question also kind of clearly shouts out to be a dynamic programming question. The reason being that we, we need to work through sub problems to derive at the final answer, which will be the, the largest square that contains ones. So how we, we think about it is that what is the smallest square that can be present in this matrix? So that will be a single one. Right, the area would be one, and that will be the maximum, uh, the minimum um, square containing one. Right. Now, let's think about bigger than that. Right. So bigger than that would be the one here, like okay, not this. So zero, one, zero, one. This will be the just next bigger. Right. So for this to be a square, all of them need to be ones, right? So we'll be, if we are at zero, we'll need to check the status of all these three and they need to be all ones, right? So we'll just check i minus one j, i minus one j minus one and i j minus one, right? These are the three adjacent ones. And then for, for example, for this one, we'll check these three. For this one, we'll check these three. So, so what we'll do is that we know that for this row and for the first column, for the first row and the first column, since there is nothing above it or to the left of it, this is what it is, right? So if, for example, all of these were to be zero, then we, we could have said that this is um, one is the maximum size, right? Because that's just what the value of the, of the particular element is. So we'll just have to populate them as is in, in, in our dynamic programming array um, because they, they are not derived. They just use their own values. And then after that, to calculate the value uh, of dp of one comma one for the zero, if there's a zero, we don't need to calculate anything because it cannot be part of any square. For once, we'll just take whatever this is. So instead of, if we just go for checking whether they are all one, we will always at most get the answer of four because we'll at all times be checking just the three elements, right? We don't want that. So what we'll do is that we'll take the minimum of these and add a one to it. So for example, here, minimum would be zero because that never got updated. So zero plus one. Similarly for this, there is a zero here. So the minimum would be zero, so plus one and so on. And even for this, it would be um, uh, zero plus one, one. Now, when we come to this, so, what would happen is that for all three of them, it would be one, right? Zero plus one, zero plus one, zero plus one. And when we will take the minimum of those ones, we'll get a one and we'll add one to it because this itself is a one, right? And we'll get two. So that's how we build up the solution. And it's, it's really easy to code up. So let's get started with 
writing down the code. Okay, why would that be? Okay, it's fine. All right, so base conditions. So if if matrix dot length equals equals zero, that's there's no element in the array. Return zero, right? Cool. Um, now let's assign rows equals to matrix dot length and columns equals to matrix of zero dot length. So this always comes in handy when you know that there's there's a lot of times when you'll have to like write this again and again. So it's always better to put them into variables. So as I said that um, we will be traversing the first row and the first column and using their values as is. So we'll, we'll also, let's create a DP array. Okay, so rows, columns, yeah. Um, now for int i equals to zero, i less than rows, i plus plus so the rows will be changing right so row and then of zero so that is like the first um yeah that's the first column right this that we are talking here about is equal to so we'll just take that if matrix of i of zero is equal to equal to zero this the character zero then zero otherwise one okay and we also need the max which we want to return so we'll also just check if max equal to math dot max of max comma db of i Zero because it is possible that uh, the entire matrix has only zero, so in that case we want to return zero. But it is also possible that all these have all zeros and just the first row has one one, right? So we don't want to miss. We don't want to miss on that. So that's why we have to check for the max here as well. And now in a very similar fashion, just for the first row. Okay, so I is less than columns i plus plus dp of zero uh, of i equals to matrix of zero of i equal equal to zero then zero otherwise one equal to zero then zero otherwise one cool and again the same thing max equals to math dot max of max comma db of zero i okay so now we have basically prepped our db array now let's get started so and i equals to one i less than rows i plus plus int sorry int j equals to one j less than columns j plus plus all right so now now the only thing that you have to do is for dpfi j is that it should be math dot um, we want to take the minimum okay so, <coughs> sorry so we'll just write math dot min and uh, yeah so we'll just say that dp of i minus one j comma db of i minus 1, j minus 1, okay? 
and then since we cannot have two um, since we cannot have oh yeah we are missing one really important thing that if matrix of i j is equal to equal to one only then if it's a zero doing nothing okay fine so uh, this and then we have to apply another math dot min and we give it the next one that is db of i and g minus one so that basically covers these three okay these three positions and <clears throat> whatever is the minimum uh, to that we add a one okay let's just check the brackets yeah looks decent so um, we just update this okay and every time we are updating this we also have to update max okay so max equals to the same math dot max of max comma dp of i and j yeah so um Yeah, that makes sense. So every time we find a one and we are calculating what is the biggest square that we can form using this one, we are also checking if that is uh, bigger than max. If yes, then we are updating it. If no, it's fine. So at the end, so we just have to return max into max because that is the area of the square all right let's see if that works cool yeah so the time complexity for this is o of n into m and the space complexity is o of n into m as well because we're using a dynamic programming array to store all the elements uh, once again. So I hope you enjoyed this question and if you find it helpful, please like, share and subscribe. Keep coding and take care guys.